Uh, welcome to an uh, introduction to ratio spread positions for options traders. This presentation uh, comes from Jeff A., who last Friday on March 27th during our open discussion asked if we could explain ratio spreads. Well, ratio spreads are any combination of selling or buying more contracts of a certain type of option at a different strike price than the other. Well, it's a strange explanation, but the most common ratios are 2 to 1, either selling 2 and buying 1, or buying 2 and selling 1. A 3 to 2 ratio, a 5 to 3, and I've also seen discussion on a 7 to 5 ratio. Well, let's just focus on the 2 to 1. A common ratio spread, the 2 to 1 call spread or put spread, and a common setup for a ratio call spread 2 to 1 would be to sell 2 at or just out of the money calls and buy one in the money or at the money. You try to do this at a net credit. Taking a look at SPY trading at around 250, I could sell two 15th of May 250 calls for 1452. This would bring in about $2,900. At the same time, I'd buy one contract of the May 240 call, same expiration, but only one contract against the two that I'm selling. This would cost 2071, so we'd get a net credit in of about $830. Now, there's two components to the ratio call spread. In the two to one fashion, we have a bull call debit spread, where we've bought a 240 strike and sold a 250, and a naked call that extra 250 strike we sold that is currently not protected by another long call option or stock or underlying ownership. As you can see, the profit and loss chart of the ratio call spread is typically bearish to neutral. If the underlying falls, all of the calls would expire, and we'd keep the net credit. We take that $830 and we have that profit even if the underlying went to zero. The peak, of course, is at the short option strike price. If the stock ends right at 250, our 250 calls still expire. We keep the net credit, and that 240 call would be worth about $10. We sell to close that call, we take in an extra profit. Because one of those calls is naked, this comes with a high margin requirement to cover the naked call position. You might also need level four trading. And that naked call also takes infinite risk to the upside. If for whatever reason, we'd love to see it, but if SPY went back to 300, 320, 330, we're gonna have to pay a lot of money to close that extra short 250 call. By itself, the ratio call spread might not be the best structure due to the high margin requirement and infinite risk. But it is a great move if you own stock that's fallen in price. Using the ratio call spread will put you in a structure for a stock repair. If, say, I bought SPY at 265, it's currently down about 1450 points at 251, I might be able to buy a 245 call, sell two 255 calls, and get a small credit of about $750. And now if the stock moves up, my break even is only around 252 or 253. I don't need the stock to go back up to 265 in order to profit. Why? Well, we're still in that bull call debit spread at a 245, 255 with an extra short call. We don't have infinite risk because that extra short call is covered by our stock. Essentially, we have a covered call with a bull call debit spread and that bull call debit spread was paid for. This is also called income method number five for radioactive traders. But it's a fantastic way to help you get back to break even. It is a ratio call spread in the stock repair, but since you own the underlying, it is covered and can help you get back to break even faster. And quick note, five or six years ago, broken wing butterflies were all the rage. Well, the ratio call spread was kind of the nexus of the broken wing butterflies. Investors liked the idea of perhaps the ratio call spread 
hated the idea of having the naked call on the high margin. How can we avoid that? Well, we buy a higher strike call that is less than the net credit. So in our original spread of buying the 240 and selling 250s on the left, if we add a cheap 270 call to the upside, we limit that infinite risk. We do take a little bit away from the net credit to the downside, but we get set up in a structure where we don't have to cover the high margin. We're in a bull call debit spread plus a bear call credit spread, what would look like an all call broken wing butterfly. It's called a broken wing butterfly because that higher strike 270 is 20 points away from the shorts where our other 240 call is only 10 points away. So it's a wider spread to the upside to get that cheaper cost as well. And you'd have to make sure that that cheaper call that you're buying is a lower price than the original net credit. And that's sort of where we got the broken wing butterfly. Now, of course, let's talk about the put ratio spread. Same structure, but with puts. I might buy one at or slightly in the money put and sell twice as many at a different strike, at or out of the money, lower strike for a net credit. So in our example on SPY, I might buy a 260 put for May for 1903 and sell twice as many 250 puts at a lower strike for 1490. This would take in about $2,980, pay out 1903 for the 260. We have a net credit of about $1,000. Now we see the same type of structure just flipped. In this case, if the underlying rises, the puts expire worthless, and we keep that initial net credit of just over $1,000. Max return would occur at the short put strike prices. If the stock is trading at 250, those two short puts expire worthless. Our 260 put is 10 points in the money. We sell to close that, get another 10 points or $1,000, and that's the peak. Opposite of our call ratio spread, the put ratio spread, the risk is to the downside because we have a naked put position on our security. So essentially, the two components in this structure are the bear put debit spread, buying one 260 put, selling one 250, and then the naked put at the 250 strike price. Of course, we'd have to put up the margin to cover that naked put position, which might also be pretty high. So the final thoughts on the standard ratio spread you do get a pretty wide break-even range. In our ratio call spread, anything below about 267, 268, we're making a profit because the net credit was achieved. On the case of the put ratio spread, now anything above roughly 230, 229 will give us some profit on the position. But both require a high margin due to the naked aspect. And the ratio call spread, you might need level four trading in order to have the naked call. You may be able to get a similar performance with a similar range of profitability, just taking a standard directional credit spread or debit spread. Bull put credit, bear call credit, bull call debit, bear put debit. One of the components, of course, of the ratio call spread. What is more commonly used are the back spreads put ratio back spreads and call ratio back spreads. What if we were to reverse the idea so nothing is naked and can still get a credit? So if I bought two cheap out of the money calls and sold one at or just slightly in the money call and got a net credit. Looking at the call side here, I might go out of the money and buy two May 260 straight calls for 1093 pay out about $2,200. And we'd sell one contract of the May 240, 20-point 20 strike difference, for $2,341. This does give us a small net credit of about $150 or so. What's the benefit? Well, we bought two and sold one, so we have no naked requirement. Essentially, we have a bear call credit spread at the 240 to 260 strike, we may have to cover the 20 point margin, of course. We do receive a net credit. So if the underlying falls unexpectedly, then of course, 
we would have the net credit. The calls would expire worthless, we'd keep that small net credit. What we essentially have is that bear call spread with a long call that we received at a credit. So if the stock moves up, we're getting a profit on the position. However, as is flipped in reverse, we have to beware the valley of death. Inside that little V profit and loss chart, here we see about between 241 and 279. In normal market conditions, that's what we would expect to see. Stock may be moving up in 45 days, just 5%, 6%, or dropping 3% or 4%, and it would stay in that loss zone. Of course, the maximum loss, that $2,000 margin requirement minus the net credit, occurs right at 260. That's the only time we see the maximum loss. But if the stock starts to move up, we need another 20 points where that extra long call starts to cover the margin requirement of 20 points. And again, our components, we have the bear call credit spread. We sold a slightly in the money 240 call, bought a just out of the money 260 call, and we have the extra call, a long call position to profit to the upside that we receive at a credit. Now let's go back to that normal market condition discussions. Beware the valley of death. This PY right now is at 252 or so. So if we expected maybe a 5% move in normal market conditions over a 30 or 40 day period, 60 to 70% of the time, we would stay inside that death valley range. We're not saying you're gonna take the maximum loss every time, but in most cases, normal market conditions, we'd expect to be in the range of loss. We'd start to see a small profit, maybe 10 to 15% of the time, say a 20 point drop in one direction, or a 20 point increase in the other direction. 5% of the time would you expect a massive decline to the downside and a massive increase to the upside to get that higher profit. This is just a rough analysis of what we've sort of seen over many years in normal market conditions. Of course, right now we're not in normal market conditions, but we just wanted to show this for you based on our expectations of what you'd expect to see in a normal market circumstance with the backspread position. Let's talk a little bit about that push ratio backspread. Same structure, but reversed. Here, I'm going to buy two out-of-the-money puts below the stock price for lower cost. And we're going to sell one at, or likely slightly in the money put, for net credit. Because of the current volatility in the markets, we see some expensive prices, which means we have to go to a wider gap than we'd probably like. An example for a small net credit here on our ratio backspread would be buying two SPY 240 puts for 1154. That would cost us about $2,300. And I can sell fairly in the money 270 strike put with SPY at about 251 for $24. So we take in the $2,400, pay out about $2,300, a little bit over $100 net credit for our put ratio backspread. We don't have any naked put positions. We are in a wide bull put credit spread, selling the 270 and buying a 240, 30 point margin that we'd have to put up with our broker to require. We do take in a credit, so if SPY starts to go up to 270, 280, 290, all puts expire worthless, and we keep that $100. We don't have infinite upside, but we do have infinite downside to zero because of the extra long put that we received at a credit. But as before, we have to be careful of the valley of death. The red loss in that V portion of this profit and loss chart break even roughly between about 210, 211 to let's say 270, 268 or so. So that's a wide movement. But the stock at 251, Naturally, we see here, this is going to profit in a bearish mode, but if we're wrong and it goes up, we could still receive some profit. Normally, I wouldn't look for a 30-point put ratio backspread. Due to the high IV with the current market conditions, it's hard to find a reasonable ratio put backspread that's not 30 to 40 points apart going 30 to 40 days out. I did take a look at, let's for this example, trying to buy two at the money, 250 puts, which would cost about 29.80 but we'd still have to go 30 points up to that 280 strike to get at least 
$1 of net credit. But this also brings us to a second note on this position. If I'm selling a 270 put, I'm 19 points in the money. Aren't we at risk of early assignment? Absolutely. We're not going to sugarcoat that. This is a partial problem with both the call ratio backspread done this way and the put ratio backspread as well. I've got a 270 put sold. It's 19 points in the money. And we did buy 240 puts in this example. I'm sorry, but that's roughly 11 points out of the money. I could be assigned at 270, forced to buy shares of SPY at 270 at any time between now and May expiration. Yes, I bought the 240s, but if the stock's still trading at 250, 251, or 252, I'm not going to exercise and sell my shares of stock at 240 when I can sell them at the market at 250. So it's not going to be covered. I may need to put up the capital, even though I have the margin requirement here, to buy that position. So why would we use it at all? In that case, we're risking early assignment, which is probably what would not we want to do. Well, over the years, we've taught you different ideas for stock or portfolio insurance. Buying SPY or index ETF puts for portfolio insurance, we have that listed for you on the blog under stock and portfolio insurance. We've talked about buying calls on the VIX when VIX was in a lower range for an unexpected event to help hedge portions of your portfolio that might be in credit spreads, calendar spreads, or something that might realize a large percentage loss if there's a sudden unexpected swing in the market. And that saved me many times over the last several years. Now, every week during our Friday sessions, our regular attendee Sam offers his discussion on buying straight shares of UVXY, the volatility ETF directly, rather than calls on the VIX, and also buying contra ETFs as a market hedge. The ratio put backspread is another option that can help hedge a portfolio. Using that 2 to 1 ratio we saw for normally a low cost and in normal market conditions a lower margin requirement than 20 or 30 points. If the market falls, well you've got that hedge there against the portfolio with the SPY ratio spread puts where you can see a gain in those values. If the market moves up, well the rest of your portfolio, your long positions are doing well and you still might get a net credit out of this position. With this market hedge, if the underlying or the market stays sort of in that death valley with that small movement, well, you might be able to hedge your other long positions by generating income. Not worried about the ratio spread, keeping this in place in case of a sudden unexpected move. Do you have to remember that it still runs the risk of early assignment. And that's our little discussion on the ratio spreads and the ratio back spreads as well. Now, you know my thoughts on insurance. The best insurance for long positions, core holdings in your stock, of course, is using the married put technique discussed in the blueprint. Proper protection for single-digit risks, the access to 12 different income methods to help pay for that insurance, and potentially bulletproof your position as well. You can, of course, see more information on the blueprint on all of the products pages on power options and at radioactive trading. Of course, if you don't want the best way to insure the stocks directly, head over to the blog, blog.powerop.com. Just do a basic search for stock or portfolio, and you'll see our part one and part two of stock or portfolio insurance, discussing using SPY puts, QQQ puts, and other securities to help hedge your portfolio. And of course, the equations that we use to see how many contracts you should buy to help hedge the portfolio, lose only maybe 10%, 20%, or 30% of a market decline. The ratio put back spread is one more tool in your arsenal to help you hedge against the unexpected. It does come with risk and obligation of being assigned early and a margin requirement, but it can give you a little bit of profit if the market is going up instead of just wasting money buying a put that expires worthless on, say, SPY. And if it falls, you can still get most of the advantage of just buying a put outright on SPY, SPX, or broad-based market indexes as well.